Previously on the bill. What am I? Jason, Devon. I'm the manager. There's nothing you can't say to me in front of my father. If he can kick a man half to death because of what? A kiss on the cheek? Come on, mate, help us out. I can't. Toast for breakfast, anyone? Hey! Rachel's brought me up the speed on the Devlin case. We've got Mickey and Will on board and Jack's across the gate. Then the Devlin's one inside when it went up, isn't it? Oh, you can't know everything. Sarge, yeah. found a witness. It said they saw a woman running away around the time the fire started. Description? Oh, vague. Early 20s, slim build, blonde hair. Yeah, he said he saw her run out the end of the alley. Um, do you want us to go and check see if there's any CCTV in that direction? Yeah, yeah, go on, get on it. Go on? Yeah. Right, the fire started about midnight. Nobody was hurt except the barman, Pete Copperfield. He lives in one of the flats above the bar. Right. The fire brigade pulled him out. Serious? No, he'd be fine. Uh, the bouncer lives in the flat next to him, Carl Fox, but he wasn't home. We're looking at arson? Probably. FIO's going to talk to him. Morning. Right, I can walk you in quickly. Linda Preston, by the way, fire investigation officer. Yes, Max Carter. This is DC Stevie Moss. I hope those aren't your best clothes. Stairwell went off, then the fire took hold in the roof space. Do we know if it's deliberate? Yes. Two seats of fire, one outside the door to the bar and one on the landing directly above. Traces of accelerant found on both spots. Petrol, probably. There's also accelerant on the stairs. So whoever it was was intent on getting both the flat and the bar. Looks like it at this stage. We want to look at the flats. Can we get up on the landing? We have to bring down the rest of the ceiling first, make it safe. An hour or so, maybe? OK. Give us a shout when you're done. Okay. This yard's a briefing at 9.15, so that gives us an hour to do the prep. Has anybody contacted the Devlins? Uh, yeah, Matthew's coming in to the Nick in half an hour, so do you want to take him while we go and talk to Pete Copperfield or St Hughes? Fine, then we can spot most before the briefing. Great, and perhaps you'll all have rolled your tongues in by then. Do you like to talk to him? Make it quick. <coughs> How you doing there, Mr. Copperfield? Well, not great, but the doctor says I might be fit to get out late this morning. Right. Do you think you're up to telling us what happened? There's not much to tell. The bar was closed last night, so I crashed out in front of the telly. Next thing I know, there was smoke everywhere. Thank you. Did you hear anything? I was out like a light. When he woke up, when I couldn't breathe. <coughs> Hang on, are you saying that the fire was deliberate? Yeah. So, do you know anyone that's got a grudge against your boss? Which boss? Matthew or Jace? Either. Well, I wouldn't know much about the big boss. I don't see much of him, but Jace is. Go on. Well, let's just say he rubs people up the wrong way. We noticed. Can you think of anyone specific? <laughs> we'll put a pin in the phone book. He's actually proud of the fact that nobody likes him, but you didn't hear that from me, all right? And what about yourself? Anyone got it in for you? No. Why? Well, you were the only person in the building. Look. As far as I'm concerned, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you don't mind, I like to keep thinking that way. <coughs> Hello, I'm Matthew Devlin. I'm here about the fire. We'll take it, Katie. Mr. Devlin, thanks for coming in. We can talk through it. So, have you seen the fire damage? Yes, yeah, so I went around during the night of the blaze. So, uh, when can I get back inside? Well, it's a crime scene, Mr. Devlin. The fire was deliberate. Well, at least no one was killed. Don't seem very surprised to learn that it was ours. No, I'm not surprised. Running a bar in these stands a rough business. So where were you last night, at midnight? You don't seriously think I would torch my own place, do you? Insurance job happens all the time. I was at home entertaining guests, including a local councillor, just so you know. Mm. Was your son Jason there? No, he was at a party in Kent. He's on his way back. Look, we own the business together. Jason manages it. He's got no more reason to destroy it than I have. Who might have a reason? <sighs> I could give you a list of creditors, people we barred. Apart from that, I can't think. Maybe it's about Jason. I mean, he does have a habit of attracting trouble. If you're talking about yesterday, Jason didn't do anything. So I hardly think that's a line of inquiry worth pursuing. Look. I'll help you in any way I can. 
because we are the victims here and I expect to be treated accordingly. Sergeants, this is my mobile. Call me if you need anything. If looks could kill. No, he doesn't like us, does he? I was talking about you. Cup of tea before the briefing. Yeah, my shout. Gov, Mum. Fire brigade have established arson. Looks like trouble follows this pair around. Uh, Jason was arrested yesterday on suspicion of assaulting Andrew Brennan. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it stick. No, but he's a nasty piece of work. We'll find something on him. Well, this fire gives us an excuse to poke into his business. OK, any suspects? Yeah, we've got a mystery woman who was observed running near the scene, Gov. Uh, me and Sally still trying to track down CCTV of the surrounding buildings. Mystery woman? Well, that's something. We got any suspects closer to home? No, oh, Matthew's alibi checks out. We're going to speak to Jason as soon as he's back in town. What about the people that lived above the bar? Uh, we can't find the bouncer. The barman was at home, but unless he was trying to commit suicide, I'd rule him out as a suspect. Could he have been a target? We checked him out. He's got a previous uh, caution for possession three years ago, but it's nothing serious. Anything else? Yeah, we're going to be checking up on a list of creditors and a list of punters who've been excluded from the bar. OK, let's get on with it. I'll have a word with Eddie. Jump down onto my nice crime scene. I had to go up? Yeah, yeah, I think we're done. The stairs should support you, but watch your step. Linda? Eddie Olasunji, scene examiner. Eddie, this is Linda Preston, fire investigation officer. Hello. I've never met a lady FIO before. I've not met a CSE called Eddie. And who says I'm a lady? <laughs> That's my sense of humour. We're going to get along like a house on fire. fire. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've heard that one before. Not the way I say it. Eddie, can we just get on with it, please? Things are going to cover over with cobweb soon. Mm-hmm, already have. Well, I hear you found accelerant in two places. One over there and one down below, outside the door to the bar. That's right. Well, is it possible the accelerant was poured outside this door and the traces you found below somehow spilt down the stairs? Same thing occurred to me just before you arrived. Mm. Hang about, what are you saying? That the flat alone could have been the intended target? Possible. Can't be certain, though. Sarge, someone's at the cordon. Carl Fox, he says he lives here. Be right there, Roger. OK, see you soon. Mm -hmm. Don't hurry back. Is there a woman with a heartbeat that Eddie hasn't cracked onto? Actually, he's never hit on you, has he? You work in the bar, living under the threats, that's right? Yeah. Is Pete all right? Yeah, he will be. Where were you last night, Mr Fox? I stayed around my girlfriend's house in Dalston. Talk about lucky. Yeah, we're going to need you to come in and answer a few questions, if that's all right. Excuse me a moment, Mr Fox. Have you got something? Yep, CCTV of the mystery woman from a bank up the road. There's a screen grab and a disc. Ah, to turn up for the books. What is yeah, it looks exactly like Abby Nastasi, Jason's girlfriend. You can't actually see the back of the bar from this angle. No, but the time code does put it around the time the fire started. Okay, take Stevie and try the address we've got for him. Yeah. Smith and me will go and see what Pete Cobfield knows here. Okay. But he's right. Pete's flat was a sole target. He knows more than he's letting on. Listen, I know you're reaching to get some dirt on Jason and Matthew, but let's not lose sight of what we're investigating, you know? What are you saying? I should cut them some slack. I don't like them any more than you do. Until we know otherwise, they are the victim. Well, unfortunately, that's what sticks in my throat. Abby! Abby! Abby, wait! Abby, get back here! Abby, stop! <laughs> I didn't do anything. Oh. You done something to your arm, have you? Won't be a burn, would it? We have you on CCTV running away from the scene of the fire. The FME has confirmed that there's second degree bands on your arms, so start talking. I was there. Can you speak up, please, Abby? I was there at the fire. Did you start it? Oh, 
I swear he was already going when I got there. So how'd you get the burns on your arm? I was trying to get up the stairs. Why would you do that? I was trying to get up to see Pete. I thought he might be trapped. So you and Pete are friends? Yes. Very good friends? Would that be right? Yes. What does Jason think about that? He doesn't know. Please don't tell him. If he runs out, he... that's why I ran away to avoid those questions. And is that why you waited till this morning before you went to the hospital? I didn't want to go, but the pain got a little bit too much. And, and I wanted to see Pete. Jason's going to see those burns. How are you going to explain them? Oh, I say, I went to the bar looking for him. And you think Jason's going to believe that, dear? You? You're terrified of him, aren't you? He buys me nice things. He, uh, he put me in a flat. So, what's the problem? I can't help my feelings. <laughs> mean for me and Pete. That, that doesn't answer the question. What's the problem with Jason? He just said it, OK? He frightens me. You're going to speak to him, aren't you? About the fire? Yeah. Please don't say anything about me and Pete. See if Jason finds out. Yeah, it's true. Me and Abby have been seeing each other for the past couple of months. So how'd it start? Jason's always leaving her in the bar while he goes off to see his mates. And you keep her company, dear? He treats her like a slave. Even it's her. Do you know that? I do now. As soon as I've got enough money, we're getting out of there. Together. Look, I wasn't lying to you earlier. I just didn't want Jason finding out about us. Well, maybe he already knows. You what? Think about it. Petrol was pulled right outside your door. Maybe you were the target after all. But he wouldn't burn down his own place, would he? Not just to get me. Jason's an act now, think later kind of guy, though, isn't he? Well, suppose he doesn't, know. You can't ask him about Abby and me. Not without tipping him off. Any luck with that list of creditors and exclusions? Not so far, Gov. All right, stay with it. How'd it go with Abby? Oh, a story checks out, Mum. I think we can buy that. Jason's the one in the frame at the minute. Oh? Turns out Abby and Pete are having an affair. Oh, well, that gives Jason a big fat motive, if he knows. Jason is back from Kent, by the way. He's coming in at half twelve. Well, I don't think we should wait. Do we know where he is now? At his place. Oh, I'd like to have a crack at him, Gov, if that's all right. Jason beat somebody after death yesterday, so whoever talks to him about Abby should do it carefully. I think I could be trusted not to put my foot in it. Smithy's just stressing a point, Callum. Tread carefully, for Abby's sake. Max, you go with him. I can't wait to see the look on Jason's face. You're an evil man. Hello again. What the...? Didn't you get the message? I am coming into the nick. Yeah, yeah, we got that, but, you know, we can't sit around twiddling our thumbs, can we? We'd like to speed things along, if that's OK, Mr Devlin. You guys know what you're doing. Unlike yesterday. This is just about a fire, Mr Devlin. Isn't that right, Callum? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm shocked that you think it could be about anything else. Where were you last night at midnight? At a party in Maidstone. No, I didn't start the fire. Yes, there are a dozen people who vouch for me. Do I know who could have done such a thing? No, I haven't got a clue. Have I got any enemies? Yes. Hundreds. Now, is that it? No, not quite. When did you hear about the fire? This morning, about eight. What, nobody called you during the night? I was at a party. The phone was turned off. I crashed out with some mates about four. I woke up, there was a bunch of messages. You know that Pete Copperfield was caught in the fire? Yes, my dad said, but he's all right, so I've heard. You've spoken to Abby? No. What's she got to do with it? She was probably trying to call you during the night. You may as well know that she hurt herself during the fire. What? She burnt her arm trying to get into the bar, looking for you. 
What? I didn't tell her I was going to be out all night. That must be why she... Why she what? Well, sometimes I do the books in the bar when it's closed. She's come looking for me there a couple of times. You should also know that because she was there, she was a suspect briefly. Oh, talk sense, man. Abby couldn't do that even if she had a reason and you leave her alone. Just calm down. We probably won't need to talk to her again. She hasn't got a motive, has she? Where is she? She had her flat? No, she's being bailed. Well, then I'll come down and pick her up. Suit yourself. Are you all right, sweet? What have you been doing, you silly cow? If you didn't know where I was, use the phone. I'll call Dad if you can't get me. Are you finished with us? Yeah, for now. If he knows about Abby's affair, then he should get an Oscar. He doesn't know. Van Gogh's our motive. We're back to square one. I'll brief the DCR on the latest. Should we head down the bar, see if Eddie's got anything? Yeah. Right, so what do we got? Three things. One, we found a bag of coke on Pete Coverfield's bedside table. OK, personal use. Doesn't mean much. Except he's no boy scout. Second, it looks like someone has tried to kick this door down. Very right, so sure. A door and frame of damage. Lock's been jarred out. It's mounting. Right. Well, that matches the witness statement we got that somebody was shouting and kicking. Pete Coverfield's been telling a pack of lies. Third thing's over here. Remember, we had to bring the ceiling down. This came down with it. Identity document. Stashed in the loft. NHS medical card, European birth certificate. They went to Maria, someone, rest of the name is gone. But the point is, these look familiar. You see that small imperfection in the typeface? Yeah. That's exactly the same floor as the other fakes I've been seeing recently. So, forgeries? Nothing the Devlin's are into. Who needs a forged European birth certificate? What about this Abby? Right. How do we know she's who she says she is? Yeah, well, it's worth looking into, Max, isn't it? One thing we do know is that Pete Copperfield has been lying to us. Ah, uh, speak of the devil, he's a recording sarge. He's just charged himself into the use. Right. See you later. Yeah. All right. Right. Any chance of me getting to my flat? No. I want to know why you've been lying to us. What? Someone tried to kick your door down last night, and I think you know who it was. Well, that's not true. I was asleep. Dreaming about forged documents in your loft, were you? Who you getting all this? I don't know what you're talking about. You work for Jason, and Jason's involved with something. I want to know what it is. Look, you're crazy. I'm his barman. End of story. I don't believe you. You're tough. You're not being very helpful, Pete, are you? Why should I be? I might be a bit worried if I were you about what Jason might do if you find out about Abby and you. Are you bluffing? Try me. You think I know something? You nick me. Otherwise, I'll go and find a taxi. Nice one, Ben. Well, with all due respect, Sarge, I appreciate you gave me a bit of notice before you put me in an awkward position. What? Have I offended your delicate sensibilities? He knows something, and I'm going to find out what. So why don't you nick him, then? Because I'm going to put him under surveillance and see where he goes from here. You think you might be able to back me up on that? I'll get after it. I was saying they owe me about a uh, thousand pounds for stationery and menus, various things. Do they always pay late? Not usually this late. But I wouldn't go around burning down their bars. Any idea you might have in for them? Mr. Kuzinski. It's not my place to talk about my customers. Even if they do owe me money. You do realize somebody could have died in that fire, don't you? Even so. You wouldn't want us to think you were hiding something, would you, Mr. Kaczynski? I'll say this much, no more. I hear the Devlins have other business interests. Things they're not so keen to advertise as their clubs and bars. Such as? You're the detectives. You'll detect. Right, I've approved your number with Ben and Callum on Pete Copperfield. Any progress here? Uh, yes, Governor. We've had a tip that the Devlins ain't just into bars and clubs. So we run some checks at companies in Aston Land Registry. Turns out they're landlords as well. They've got multi occupancy properties all over the East End. Nearest one is on Stafford Road. Well, there's no mention of any tenants on the list of creditors that Matthews gave us this morning. No, which would suggest it's something they don't want to advertise. So I reckon that place in Stafford Road is worth having a look at. Absolutely, Governor. Oh. 
Stay at this place. Well, no wonder the Devlin's want to keep it quiet. Right, my new step. It stinks as well. Yeah. Oh, it does. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. Sorry. 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 <coughs> okay. Hello. Is your mum and dad around? Can I talk to you? Is it right? Can we have a little word? They're terrified of us. Yeah. Probably, because they've all here illegally. Another good reason why the Devlin's want to keep it quiet. Absolutely. It's all right. Okay, don't worry. We just need to have a look. It's all right. Don't, don't worry. Scared. Sarge? Yeah. There's people crammed in everywhere in here. Crammed in here, look. Sarge, this place is a death trap. There's wires hanging out of all the smoke alarms and junk blocking up all the fire exits. You've got <laughs> children, babies living in this filth. I'm going to find a council. This tenant's not going to thank you for it. Yeah, maybe not. But they're probably paying their last penny in rent to the devlins for what, this pit? It's not good enough. Abby lives somewhere on this road. Oh, it makes sense. You'd want to see her. Probably just checking to make sure Jason's not about. Yeah. Well, something's not right. Go on. Sir, ask me seven nine five. Ambulance message number three. Lad, wait, wait, touch wait. wait, you told Jason, didn't you? Didn't you? She's taking a right kick in. Apparently, she won't be able to talk for a while. But then again, if she listens to what Pete Copperfield's been blabbering on about, you'd be lucky we get a time of day. You've got something on your mind, Prissy Girl. Okay, since you ask. I saw you on your mobile shortly after he left us. To the DCI? Yeah. What are you suggesting? I'm not being funny, such. If you was Pete, what do you think? making a formal complaint, so she threatened to tell Jason about him and Abby, and Abby's beating as a result of that. Well, do you believe it, Mum? She's on a stretcher, Callum. Why would I do something like that? So you can nick Jason after he went looking for payback. He's the one that needs to be answering questions, not me. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get much out of him now, are we? No, I've got no choice. Until this is cleared up, you're taking a back seat on the investigation. You are joking. Am I laughing? I'll talk to you back at the nick. I understand you were present during this conversation in question. Yes, ma'am. So, if someone were to ask you what happened, what would you say? I didn't hear anything of a friendly nature, ma'am. You better hope you don't have to swear to that. So, is it true? Yeah. See, the little birds have been talking already. After all the good work, did you try and force a result? No. No, you didn't threaten him, or no, you didn't try and drop a minute with Jason? Do you not want to nail Jason and Matthew? Yeah, of course I do. Don't be stupid. Right, well, then what's the problem? The problem is, Pete and Abby were the only two people that were likely to tell us what's going on, and now you've made sure they're not going to do that. Have I? Yeah. Vicky? Excuse me, sir, have you given us a minute? Actually, I think it'd be better if I stayed. Do you think recriminations could wait? We have still got work to do. You're going to have to do it between you. But I'll be put on the naughty step. We are all after the same thing, you know? Yeah, and the irony is after seeing that bum, I'm beginning to think like he does. Well, all the more reason for us to keep an eye on the ball instead of having a pop at each other, eh? You got any other pearls of wisdom you want to share with me? Yes, actually. Everyone's assuming that it was Jason that beat up Abby, supposing it wasn't. We've got two things on the go at the moment. We've got the assault on Abby and the rental property in Stafford Road. So is this property business going to help us with a fire investigation? I don't know. Social services are down there now clearing up the mess along with immigration. But the problem is there's no law against renting to illegals and I don't know if it takes us anywhere anyway. Unless it was one of the tenants who wanted to get their own back by starting a fire. In which case we're looking at a whole bunch of suspects. It does make it more likely the Devlin's are behind the forgeries though, doesn't it? I mean, they've got a captive market with their tenants. And on the subject of illegal, Stevie came up with something else. Yeah, I spoke to Border Control Gov. They've got no record of an Abby Nastasi entering the country legally. OK, until we've sorted this mess out of Stafford Road, let's concentrate our efforts on the assault on Abbey. Max, take Eddie down to Abbey's flat, OK? 
In the meantime, you two see what you can get out of Jason. My pleasure. I've had about enough grief for today. He's all yours. Ask away. Where were you between 1.30 and 1.45 this afternoon while Abby was being assaulted? Me. <laughs> You've got to be joking. Why the hell would I do that to her? You tell me. You're the one that likes giving people a kick in. I don't know. Jason! Quit messing around. You think I like coppers traipsing in and out of here? Tell them where you were. I dropped Abby at the flat about half twelve. I met up with Carl Fox at the nightclub we own. Why? I had to get him sorted on another job until the bar's back up and running. Can't just have him sitting round on the payroll. No, you wouldn't mind that. Yeah, that's where I was. Check it out. Now, you answer me some questions. Who put me in the frame for beating up Abby? These are just routine questions, Mr. Devlin. No, 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 no. First of all, I'm suspected of torching the bars, if that made any sense. And now this, what's going on? Drop it, Jason. No, Dad. Either they're trying to fit me up or something Abby's else. Abby's having it off with Pete. That's why you've been in the frame all day, you prat. Oh, look at him. Isn't that proof enough for you? You didn't know. No, I told you that tart would bring us trouble. Now I hope you'll listen to me. I'll kill her. No, you won't. What you do is stay away from her. Listen to your old man. How come you know so much about the affair, Mr. Devlin? I use my eyes. Now, are you going to stick to investigating the fire, or do I have to speak to your chief? We are investigating the fire. In fact, we think one of your tenants might have done it. They'd have good reason to. Just for the record, I didn't know any of them were illegal. And if they want to import half their village to move in with them, that's their lookout. Thanks for your time. We show ourselves out, eh? Oh, well, that's it then. As long as Carl Fox confirms Jason's alibi is off the hook. I suppose on the plus side, so is Sergeant Stone. Yeah, but we still need to work out who assaulted Abby. So let's stop off at a flat on the way back to the Nick, eh? Edmondo. Look a bit lonely, Eddie, without your FIO, mate. I've seen her for a drink later. She says she'll tell me stories about fires that will make my hair stand on end if I had any. Don't tell me you've pulled. Nah, it's not like that. She's seen the doctor. Gives you hope, though, doesn't it? Got anything for us, Eddie? Well, whoever attacked Abby was wearing gloves, probably to protect their knuckles as much as anything. Well, the hospital told Max most of the damage was caused by a fist. So no prints, then? Oh, I didn't say that. See that phone? Mm. Assailant pulled the cable out of the wall after he'd beaten her to make sure she couldn't call for help. But that little bit of extra cruelty might be his undoing. How's that? Well, there's blood stains on the cable where he pulled it, and his gloves are obviously slippery from the blood. Don't tell me to take his gloves off. Yeah, to get a grip. Probably did it without even thinking. And now I've got a lovely partial print in the blood streaks. Scan that, email it to Nafis, and if he's on our system, we'll know inside half an hour. You can forget Linda, Eddie. I'll buy you a drink. No, you're right, Stevie. I'm, I love you, don't get me wrong, but you're not my type. Huh? Right. Seems like I owe you an apology. Jason didn't attack Abby after all. Cheers. So, for what it's worth, I'm... Stevie's just told me that Jason's out the frame for the assault. Yes, ma'am. Good. Thanks, Eddie. I'll have that word now, Callum. Anything to say? Not really, ma'am. OK. Well, since it's clear there was no tip-off to Jason, I'll ask Mr Copperfield if he'll withdraw his complaint. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. Cos I mean, I'll get back on with the I haven't finished yet. I'm disappointed this happened in the first place. I'm even more disappointed that you put a colleague in a position where they have to go out on a limb for you. Yeah. Sorry about that, Mum. You step across the line, it won't always be so easy to step back. You can carry on where you left off. Just stay away from Pete and Abby. Thank you, Mum. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, OK, thanks very much for time. I was thinking here is Abby's regained consciousness. You should be able to talk to us shortly. Assuming she wants to talk to us. She better. Jason's off the hook for the beating, but there's still a lot going on that doesn't fit together. Now, first got a hit on that print. 
It belongs to a Donny Blake. Yeah, I know him. He's a dealer on the club scene and he's a nasty piece of work. Have we got any intelligence that links into Jason and Matthew? No associates? No. Nah. His offences are all related to violence and dealing. Pete Copperfield's got a bus for possession. We found coke in the flat. I hope this isn't going where I think it is. Maybe Pete and Abby were the sole targets all along. This might just be about drugs. And this has nothing to do with Jason and Matthew. Let's see what Pete and Abby have to say. Yeah. Pick up the about. He's just popped off with his mate Carl. Uh, get yourself a cup of tea. Night, Abby. Carl. Now, Abby, what's happened to you isn't because of anything we did. I think you know that. Uh, I'm not saying anything. Right, well, if you don't help us, then Donnie Blake's going to come after you again. Yeah, that's right. We know he's the one who beat you up. And we also know from Border Control, you're here illegally. Not saying anything. OK, then we'll tell you. A violent drug dealer is after you, which suggests you are in money. And since we know that you and Pete are trying to raise some funds so you can run away together, we think you're involved in some kind of deal with him. A deal that went wrong? And that's why I tried to torch Pete's flat and then came after you, we right? As for the forged documents we found above Pete's flat, we think they're for you, so that you can get a job after you and Pete run away. Oh, look, come on, Abby. We know most of it. And if you don't help us nail Donny Blake, then he's just going to come after you and Pete again, isn't he? Fine. Then we do this the hard way. We'll take her and Pete down to the station, and when we're done, we'll hand her over to immigration, all right? Oh, wait. He took a delivery of drugs from Donny on credit. He was going to sell the stuff into the bar, pay off the debt and keep the profit. But the drugs went missing. Missing from where? Pete stashed them in the hold all in his flat last Friday. While he was out, they vanished. Since then, Donny been threatening us, wanting his money. You got any idea who took them? Donny. He was the only one who knew. So you think he's trying to double-cross you, pull a fast one and get his money back for free? Has to be. And do Jason and Matthew fit into this at all? Oh, like I said, this whole thing was to get away from Jason. Well, that's where the trial ends. Yeah. What happens now? We get a statement off Pete and we get Donny Blake off your back. Sarge, Pete Copperfield is mate back. Thanks. Mr Copperfield. I need you to come down to the station and make a statement. What about? I think you know what about. I don't know if Abby told you anything different, but that's the story. It's a stupid plan to get away on a deal that went wrong. That's pretty much how Abby told it. Except for where you got the false papers from. Listen, um, before we go any further, what am I looking at here? That's up to the CPS. But since the drugs you got from Donny Vanish were left with the forged documents. Um, could I, um, could I get any help with that? I mean, if I told you where I got them and I offered you something else as well. What else could you give us? How about Jason and Matthew? Okay. Start talking. I got the papers from a Polish bloke. Gorzinski. Wojciech Gorzinski? Yeah. He's a printer. I heard about him through the pub grapevine. So what about Jason and Matthew? Well, Matthew contacted me this afternoon. He said if I disappeared with Abby and made this whole business go away, he'd give five grand to me and identity papers to her. Donnie wouldn't be able to find us and it would be in everybody's interest. You serious? I, I get the impression she's become an embarrassment because she's illegal. Five grand and a fake ID is a hell of a lot to avoid a bit of embarrassment. Mm-hmm. There has to be more to it than that. Well, you'd have to ask them. All I know is they offered. Before you got to Abbey, I was seriously considering going for it. Are you saying the offer still stands? Yeah. Last I heard. OK, Peter Copperfield has agreed to contact the Devlins to accept their offer. He's going to meet Matthew at Grzynski's print shop. And we'll be waiting for him. At the same time, Sergeant Stone is going to lead a raid on Donnie Blake's address to arrest him for assault and arson. Good, good intelligence. He's got hard drugs on the premises. Apparently, he cuts it in his bathroom and he's likely to try and flush it. Now, because of his record for violence, TSG are going to be along for the ride. Right, any questions? Right, Ben, so 
Sally, Roger, out with me in the entry team. Hope you like stairs. Remember, Donnie's got a lot of previous and he's violent, so watch yourselves. Stop moving. Look, Matthew's late and Pete's getting twitchy. I mean, look at him. If he's not careful, he's going to blow this. Car approaching. Looks like Jason. Jason? That's not a good sign. Do you know what? This could work to our advantage. That gives Pete a reason to be nervous, doesn't it? And the money. Go, go, go! Stay right there! Stay where you are! Stay there! Turn around! Against the car! Turn around now! Do it! Just paying this slag what sword on his wages! I want rid of him! Yeah, I bet you do. Uh, it's only about 300 quid here. Menus. <laughs> <laughs> Off. I was making a statement to the police. Actually, Carl is very good at remembering who pays his wages. Unlike some. What are you doing here, Mr. Devon? Heard my son was brought in, so I'm here to set the record straight. What is I've got her here. Come on. Whenever you're ready. Then I would like to read a short statement. Just over two weeks ago, it came to my attention that one of my employees, Pete Copperfield, was having an affair with my son's girlfriend, Abby Nastasi. I didn't inform my son, as I had no wish for him to be upset. However, as a result, I instructed another employee, Carl Fox, to keep an eye on Copperfield. Subsequently, Carl informed me he'd heard that Copperfield was planning to engage in a drug deal. Naturally, neither Jason nor I wanted that happening on our premises. I instructed Carl to inform the police immediately if such a deal went ahead. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to verify that information. You still could have warned us of your suspicions. Only this afternoon did it occur to us that the fire at the club may have been related to Copperfield's illegal activity. And we then came forward at the earliest opportunity. That's the end of the statement. That's it? That's the full extent of my knowledge of the whole affair, yes. Then what was behind Pete and Jason meeting at the print shop? Ah, you have to understand, uh, Jason's a bit of a loose cannon. What can I do? He's my son. But that doesn't answer the question. He wanted to look Copperfield in the eye because of Abby. No. He wanted to buy off Pete and Abby with cash and illegal identity documents. Well, if that's what Copperfield's been telling you, it's a vicious smear. I was intending to go to that meeting, but Jason insisted. But why meet at the print shop? Well, apparently we owe Mr. Gorzinski money, and Jason went to pay him, and it showed that there was no hard feelings, collect a rush order, the menus. You're lying. You've been using Gazinski to supply you with forged documents which you then sell to the illegal immigrants that are living in your slum flats. No. Yeah, and then you wanted to get rid of Abby because you were worried that she might know something, something that was damaging to you. That implies that I've been up to no good. Yeah. 
It does, doesn't it? Let's assume that Abby does make some spiteful allegations. She's an illegal immigrant conspiring with Copperfield to deal hard drugs. She's probably been lying to you lot most of the day too. And what does that fiasco at the print shop say about their credibility? So you tell me. Who's going to believe anything she has to say now? All right. Donny Blake's banged up waiting for his brief. Found a hold all in his flat. He's going to try and double cross Pete and Abby. What's the score with Jason and Matthew? Well. Give Matthew his due, he's got an answer for everything. Yeah, and it's all rubbish. Right, Jason went ahead with the meat to undermine Pete and Abby's credibility, that's it. Meanwhile, their brief will just make sure Jason spins the same story as his dad. But we've still got an ace up the sleeve. We've still got the printer. Not only did we find forged identity documents in your back room, Mr. Gozinski, we've also found a kit used to make them. I'm not denying I created those papers. All I'm saying is that morally, I did nothing wrong. How'd you work that out? My grandfather was a printer in Poland before the war. When the Nazis invaded, he produced papers for the refugees and the resistance. He saved people's lives. Yeah, but with all due respect to your grandfather, Mr. Gozinski, this is hardly the same situation, is it? Isn't it? <laughs> People coming here fleeing torture and persecution. If they're not allowed to stay here legally, what are they to do? I only provide papers for people who are desperate. Yeah, for a price, Mr. Kaczynski. Providing papers for people like Matthew and Jason hardly qualifies for the moral high ground, does it? I give people papers to get away from the likes of Jason and Matthew. Well, why can't you understand that? Are you saying you've never given these people forged documents to sell to their tenants? <laughs> no, 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 no. You've got that completely wrong. That's why they stopped using my, my business printing and refused to pay my invoice. Because they found out that I was providing papers for their tenants. Go on. They make money keeping these people in their slums, paying extortionate rents. They don't want the illegals to get papers and be able to work and move around freely. Beyond providing business printing, I have had nothing to do with Jason and Matthew. Hey, Gorzinski gave us nothing. Jason and Matthew are going to walk. Stevie's bringing Abby back from St. Hughes. Hopefully Abby can go back over a relationship with Jason. Might give us something. Obviously we'll ask, but... No, look, she might know a few names, a few faces, but if she knew anything decent, she'd have told us already. Maybe she did go to court. The defence would tear her apart, wouldn't they? What about a tenement of Stafford Rowe? Housing Act violation, so they'll go off with a fine. So that's it, then? Yeah, looks like it. So, who's going to do the honours and cut Jason loose? I'll do it. No, I'll do it. All right, Abby? I know you didn't cause this to happen to me. I will make sure Pete drops his accusations. Cheers. Pete's in a soft interview room. This way. what's going to happen to us? Well, uh, CPS will have to consider whether it's worthwhile bringing charges relating to the forged documents. And were they? Well, it's hard to say. They weren't actually found in your possession, so you might be lucky. But then, of course, there's immigration. They'll have to be told about you. Well, she's not going back. Even if it means I've got to marry her. Well, that's some proposal. Might want to rethink the wording of that when you get out of here. Uh, I'll go and get you that tea, and when I get back, I'd like to talk to you about Jason, if that's okay. So you can find out any dirty secrets about him? Can you blame us for asking? Mm. To be honest, I guess I had plenty of opportunities to listen into the conversations, but I really didn't want to know. Turn left, through the gates, keep walking. Is that all you've got to say? I'd like an apology. Dream on. Okay, then. Well, how about passing on a message? You can tell that slapper she's welcome to him. Oh. 
Go on. Yeah. Do it. You know what? I need to wash my hands. You're gonna need to do more than that, mate. If you're not careful. I'll be seeing you around. I look forward to it. Getting under your skin, haven't they? What's this your way of suggesting on the better than you, is it? Who knows what any of us will do given the right circumstances? I know where the line is, whatever the circumstances. Do you? Stand still.